Hello. I thought I'd talk in this dingy cellar a little bit about Phantom of the Opera and the symbolism inherent in it. It is a religious allegory in which Christine might be thought of as representing Christianity and the Phantom, or Mr. Y, as he's called in the sequel movie Love Never Dies, represents what are commonly called mystery religions, pagan or satanic. Phantom is demon, uh, Christine is angel, and they switch roles. And there are many uh, symbolisms involved that are similar to the ones I discuss in my Katy Perry videos. There's mirrors that journey into a labyrinth, and symbolic death and rebirth, uh, sexual union to create a new being, and in the end there's a peacock, and much like Katy Perry's song, Peacock, when Christine sings the fateful song, Love Never Dies, and eventually dies as a result. She's surrounded by blue feathers. So there's this story of union of, of pagan and Christian religion that runs all the way through both movies and is underneath the surface all the time. Now, at the heart of this, uh, I think, is a codependent relationship, a self-destructive relationship in what should be a creative partnership between Christine and the Phantom. The Phantom sings songs which are fundamentally absurd. Music of the Night is a song sung by a guy singing about how he can't sing, even as he sings it. <laughs> he has composed the song, obviously, and sings it to Christine, and at the end asks for her help in creating the music of the night after he has already created it. So he can sing, apparently, and the Phantom Song itself is even more illustrative of this. He, the song Phantom of the Opera is never sung completely by the Phantom of the Opera. And if he is such a wonderful teacher, why can't he teach himself to sing the song and just sing it himself? This strange premise is the, what launches Christine's career. She has allowed her shot at becoming more than a chorus girl and becoming a main opera singer because the people who run the opera are told that she has had a great teacher and the people accept this premise, the managers accept this premise, even though they have no idea who the teacher is. So they're manipulated by two things, a claim of authority and utter secrecy. They have no proof that the Phantom is a good teacher, and he doesn't really demonstrate any proof that he's a good teacher because he does not teach himself. His relationship with Christine is based on hiding his own abilities as a singer, not only from society at large, but from himself, denying his own creative ability and his own talent to a certain degree. So this is what is at the core of the conflict in the story. If the Phantom could just sing himself, he'd have no reason for having to embark on all these destructive relationships with other people. And we can see this being enacted on a grand scale all throughout the world today. Of course, there are these, these attempts to manipulate people by getting them to join these, these religions which are um, corrupting people's potential for creativity. And I think for to have to be a healthy person, you have to have a creative outlet and also, of course, a means of sharing it with someone. That's where the problem arises because when people get together in groups, they're afraid of being more creative than the person next to them and somehow being targeted, much like the, the phantom gets to be and persecuted because of it. So we have to look today, I think, for a partnership and, and ways to uh, become less afraid of being creative and to have some means of expressing ourselves which uh, don't rely on inhibition and simple animal desire and enactments of, of dark impulses. So that's about all I can think of at the moment.